All right, tonight for dinner, I'm gonna make uh, pork tenderloin. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do. It's breaded, uh, deep fried pork tenderloin. It's pretty good. Again, I wanna give credit where credit is due. Um, when I was younger, in my teenage years, um, I was friends with a family, the D'Amico family, Mary D'Amico. Um, she was the mom. She's she's the one that made this, and I liked it so much. Just as a kid, I was like, I need to know how you do that, and I learned. I never forgot, and it's one of my favorites. So if you've never tried it, this is a great way to have uh, pork tenderloin. So we're going to start out with uh, about two pounds of pork tenderloin. Each one of those is about a pound. We're going to need a bowl to um, after we bring that deep fryer. Of course, you see we got the deep fryer back there. Uh, we're going to need that. We're going to plug it in, bring it up to temperature, probably oh three sixty five something like that. We're going to need some breadcrumbs and some eggs and also I got some cayenne pepper there. I'm going to try something new on it. I'm actually going to put the uh, pepper in with the breadcrumbs and see if I can get some spice that way because I, I like spicy things. That's going to be optional though. Um, but let me get this set up so I can show you how to cut this tenderloin and get it ready and I'll be back with you. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by cutting off uh, some medallions. So, you know, inch pieces of this tenderloin. Something like that, just to give you an idea. I'm gonna cut them about that thick. We're gonna go through this whole tenderloin and uh, cut those off like that. You see how we do that. And then we're gonna take them and uh, we're gonna take a tenderizer. Flatten them out a little bit. We're going to end up with that right there. And then uh, we'll put it in eggs and uh, breadcrumbs and deep fry. But, anyways, that's how you do it. Have a plate ready on the side so that you can just uh, pound them out and then set it over there. Like I said, you don't want to mince them. Just want to pat them out some and get some nice pieces like that. All right, let me get the rest of this cut up and uh, and flattened out, and then uh, we'll get it in some egg. All right, let me show you what I got going on here. Uh, if you watched the chicken nuggets video, you just take uh, some eggs. I've got four with my fingers crossed that'll be enough. I don't always plan things out like I should, you know? Or I get to the store and, uh, oops, eggshell. No big deal. You get an eggshell in there, reach and get it out. I don't know if people make a big deal out of it. You don't want a bunch of them in there, but... Hey, if you get one in there, what's the big deal, right? Pull it out. That was a big chunk, so I got lucky. Um, yeah, like I say, I get to the store, I forget half of what I'm supposed to get. But anyway, it's four eggs. I'm sure we're going to make it somehow. We're going to mix those up. Let me rinse my hands off here. All right, and we're going to take... Last time on the chicken recipe, what I did was I took and put uh, hot sauce in with the eggs. But this time, we're going to lay out our uh, breadcrumbs. Do it a little different this time. It's one of the ideas my dad came up with, so we're going to try it live. And then we're going to take cayenne pepper. Sprinkle in there. That ought to give it a little boost, I would think. Stir that up. And there you go. Once the uh, deep fryer gets up to temperature, I'll show you. We're gonna we're gonna do it a lot like we did the chicken. We drag it through the egg, drag it through the breadcrumb, put it in the deep fryer. Voila! You know we're done. Now you know the cooking is what's gonna take the longest on this because you know two pounds is quite a bit and. Uh, you can't cook but maybe five six pieces at a time because of the size of them so it's not hard work it's just that it takes a while um the nice thing is though again you can put this in the refrigerator and uh, you don't even have to heat it up just pull that container out of the refrigerator get you a bottle of hot sauce and something cold to drink go sit down on the tv let me tell you what you'll have somebody come take it from me you know it's one of those foods get this stuff out of here um so now again um, mrs d'amico if you if you happen to see this video somehow if i've screwed up your recipe i surely apologize but uh, in the end it turns out and it tastes real well and I, I sure appreciate you uh, making this for me when I was younger and uh, introducing me to all the great foods you made but anyhow let me uh, get this deep fryer up to temperature and we'll come back and get them um, get these things cooking all right we're just gonna start by uh, putting a piece of that uh, pork tenderloin into the egg breading it up Let's 
simple stuff. That's what I like. Now I'll tell you what, the only other problem about this recipe is to make it simple, make it easy so it's not a big stress. You, know, you have to not worry about the dishes you're dirtying up and just use what you need. So that's how you do that. Let me get uh, let me get four or five of these uh, ready to go into the deep fryer, and uh, then I'll switch to switch it over so y'all can see what's going on over there. All right, deep fryer is up to temperature. You notice I've got the basket in, but what I'm going to do is set the baskets in the bottom. I don't want these things floating around. I want them to be contained in the basket so I can pull them out. <clears throat> but I want that hot grease to have a chance to sear them a little bit before they hit the basket. Just hang that in there a second. Lay it down. Be careful you don't burn yourself. Like I say, you don't want to overload your deep fryer, so I'm going to put four of these in. They're pretty good size, so. Give them a shake. They're floating. We're in good shape. Look at that. That's it. Just keep shaking them until they, you know, until that breading gets it hard enough that it won't bond to the one next to it, because you don't want that. Um, you'll have a raw spot in between them. So, anyways, let me get these things. Uh, let me let these cook for. Uh, I'll time it so y'all know. And uh, when I pull them out, I'll show you what. I All right, there you go. Uh, three to four minutes. You know, you just have to eyeball them. Depends on how big they are. I think they are. But uh, that's what you want. You want a nice, nice dark uh, color on them. It's pork, you know, so you want to make sure it's cooked. Um, at least I do. So there you go. That's how that's how you do that. Uh, let me get the rest of these cooked up and uh, probably make some rice to go with it. And uh, once I get it done, I'll show you as a dinner and uh, send you on your way. All right, let me just jump in here real quick and tell you if it looks like the tops aren't getting cooked, you can reach in here after they've been on for oh, a minute or so. Just reach in there with a fork and flip them over and uh, let that other side cook. Like I said, depending on how thick they are, if they're thin, you, you know, if you get them real thin, you don't have to do that. But a little thicker ones, you might have to do that. Um, I just wanted to jump in here and show you that's how. You know, that's how I do it. Well, there you go, folks. Luckily, you stayed with me till the end because I changed my mind on the rice. I don't know what I was thinking. This is the way to do it. This is the way I love to do it. It was just hot in the house. I didn't want to make the spaghetti. But I said, hey, you know, this is for Scotty D TV. We can't have no shortcuts. So here we go. Pork tenderloin, I've made it into kind of a veal parmesan kind of a thing. I got spaghetti with meat sauce on the side. I've taken the uh, the cutlets there, the pork cutlets, tenderloin cutlets, put them up underneath the broil for a minute and melted a little cheese and sauce on top of them. I don't need to taste it to tell you this stuff is good. Try it, try it. It's a little bit more work than my usual stuff, but uh, it's worth the effort. Sure hope you all have enjoyed it. Remember, you don't have to be a king to eat like one. Thanks for joining me.